Okay, we are back with you. This is Linda Bennett with Metaphysically Speaking, and we are on the World Wide Web. We are on Facebook. Just type in metaspeak.com. We're on Twitter. And YouTube. and what now? YouTube. YouTube. Probably you figured out by now that I am not technologically interested. <laughs> but my executive assistant is fabulous. She looks at something. She's, oh, I know how to work that. I know how to work that. She's got a phone that you could probably contact Martians with and, uh, and, and, and have conversations and uh, guide them in to the nearest airport. So if there's anything that needs to be figured out, she figures it out and we work together on it. Now, we're covering nightmares, but also I want to cover symbols. I cannot tell you how many dream symbol books there were back in the 80s, and I never found one that was worth anything. I knew a woman who, with her husband, was president and I think vice president of a world-famous organization. I'm not going to mention the organization because I don't know if they might be listening to the show and I don't want to embarrass them. Lovely people. Really, really lovely people. I like them a lot. I had them as guests on my TV show. And uh, she wrote a book on dreams, which was complete garbage. She met well. She was a lovely person. But so many people, especially since Freud, and even Freud finally gave up and said, hey, you know what? Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Um, dream symbols are individualistic or cultural. In the Native American community, which we're very familiar with, certain animals represent certain things. I have some of that as well. And sometimes I'll have an animal accompanying me. It could be one of my pussy cats. It could be a wolf. I had a dream where elephants were walking alongside me and I said to the one of the elephants, why am I walking? Why can't I be on top of one of you? And so the elephant looked over and said to me, it's about time you figured that out. Put its trunk over. I climbed on the trunk and I forgot when I was a little baby, uh, my parents brought me to the Bronx Zoo, which was a nightmare at that time, and an elephant came over, and I've loved elephants my whole life, and the elephants sniffed me, and they have hairy noses, and they have hairy bodies, and boy, did that itch. I felt the itch in my dream. So sometimes it'll be a snow leopard. I love snow leopards. I've worked with a snow leopard before at a rehab center. So sometimes it'll be things I don't recognize from this planet. But it always means something to me. And they're there as protectors. And they're there to show me something from their perspective. Now, Native Americans and also the shamans in Central South America, Mexico, also have animal spirits to guide them. Unfortunately, they use drugs to get that state. When you need meditation and not drugs, meditation is when, prayer is when you talk to God, meditation is when God talks to you. It takes a little longer to develop the skills through meditation, but it's far more reliable. Nevertheless, symbols are representative of things to you or to the culture that you were acclimated to in this particular lifetime. If you broke the rule and came back sooner than 70 years, you may have memories of your last lifetime and being in that culture and having those symbols um, responding with you in this lifetime. So don't bother with the dream books. There are certain things that are standard throughout the world, and one of them is water. Water is the feminine energy when they talk about um, the sea goddesses, the female energy of God came from the water energy on the planet. The male energy of God came from the air. So when anything is dealing with water, it's telling you to focus on your feminine intuitive side. And as, as a general rule, that is what that's referring to. It could also be a drowning experience. Many years ago, I, I actually have had three drownings in my life as a child and uh, came back every damn time. They just made me come back. And um, in this dream, I woke up panting and gasping with terrible pains in my chest. 
and something in the bed and I was wiggling around and it was sand. There was sand in my hair, my face, my mouth, my body, my bed. I had, if you've ever been in the ocean, and I realize that people in Nebraska may not have been in the ocean. So if you've ever been in the ocean, you know the salty taste that you get in your mouth. I had that same salty taste as when I drowned or when I used to go swimming. I used to be a junior lifeguard. And I got up, looked in the bathroom, and my hair was all matted and damp as if I had just come out of the ocean. Fascinating experience because I dreamt that I was swimming throughout the world. What that was doing for me, I still haven't figured it out, but I calmed down about my fear of sharks because I was bumped by a shark when I was a kid. And so I was a little panicky after that, realizing how many of them there are. And if you realize how many sharks there are and how many people don't get bitten, I wouldn't worry about sharks if I were you unless I was surfboarding in South America, not South America, South Africa, which is kind of stupid, but hey, it's not my problem, or Australia. Um, so it can be dealing with a drowning experience or it can be referring to you drowning in an experience, drowning in emotion, drowning in stress. You feel like you're overwhelmed. Pay attention to that. And it can also be a rebirthing for you, whether it's fresh, clean water or the ocean, doesn't matter. It's a cleansing and a new start. Often these dreams will happen when it's near your birthday or near your rising sign, which is what your sun sign will be in your next lifetime. That's determined by the time of your birth and the location, which is why if you ever have your astrology chart done, you need accurate information or the chart can't be cast properly. But dreaming of large bodies of water, particularly, represent a cleansing and a new style of life or a new beginning, something that is positive for you. If you find yourself drowning in inky black water, that can be a reflection of the negativity that is surrounding you. And it could also be something more serious which we're not going to discuss today, but it could be something that somebody is casting negative energy towards you or casting a curse towards you. And curses really do exist. They're not as prevalent as people think, but they're more common than people would like to know. But you can only receive a curse if you are karmically entitled to receive that curse because you've done it to somebody else in another lifetime. But that's what it can mean that somebody is casting negativity towards you or you have done something very negative, very harmful to others or to creatures. And if you climb out of the water in your dream and you're still covered in muck and black, that is a sign that you need to fix your life now because even the dream couldn't fix it. You got to fix it. If you climb out of the water and it's salty and fresh or clear and fresh water, you have been cleansed and you're now getting a new beginning. Nightmares can be caused by fears. They can be caused by stresses. They used to say, well, be careful, don't eat before you go to sleep. Sometimes I crave a bowl of cereal before I go to sleep, but I'm not a cereal lover. Nobody would ever say, gosh, Linda loves cereal. I don't have anything against the cereal industry. It's just not something I adore. But sometimes I require cereal. I don't have any different dreams that particular night, but